Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Katherine Harris. This month marks a momentous occasion here in Saipan with the arrival of the first Sakman in 200 years. A Sakman, of course, is a traditional Chamorro sailing canoe, and it was during this year's Flame Tree Arts Festival that a crew brought such a vessel using traditional navigation techniques from Guam to Saipan. During our show today, we're going to hear from a couple of crew members who made that voyage. The first is Ben Rosario, also known as Guelu, who shares his personal experiences. First, I want to give thanks to uh, our nonprofit organization, uh, TASA. It's a tradition affirming our seafaring ancestry. And TASA hired, uh, uh, was looking for a, a master carver that can carve a traditional sailing canoe, uh, which is called uh, Flying Pro, uh, Sakman. Uh, Tony Pialuk uh, was able to come and help. Uh, uh, I was there, uh, not 100%, but most of the time to to help him assist on uh, bringing the logs and, you know, cutting whatever down that he needs. But, uh, yeah, and uh, our Sakman, Fanya Godson, was born in Guam, and all the material that was used on the Sakman is, uh, uh, are from Guam. So, uh, yeah, our Sakman's 100% somewhere from Guam. Yeah. How did you come up with the design? I understand that the Sakman made in California was based on some historical designs. What design does this Sakman follow? Yeah, actually our Sakman follow a, a historical uh, design that was uh, uh, designed by uh, Anson, a, a, a German uh, person, an artist that, uh, that uh, made the design that that was actually uh, recorded from the 1700 and it's a asymmetrical design which is one side is flat and the other side is a uh, has a belly so one's uh, straight one's flat and the other one's rounded so uh, the flat part is to keep the segment going straight and the belly part is to keep the bow in from you, know, you can get more low than what you Tell us about the crew that came to Saipan over the weekend. Yeah, there's five of us that came. Uh, uh, our two navigators, uh, master navigator Tony and his brother Cesario, uh, and their nephew, along with me and uh, John Castro Mamis, which is his, uh, also apprentice. Apprentice. So, uh, yeah, we're trying to... Uh, learn more about our uh, sailing knowledge and uh, I want to perpetuate it to the younger generation. What made you become interested in traditional navigation and how did you first get started? Actually I've been uh, helping uh, carving canoe for fishing but uh, when uh, Tony started to do a project of uh, flying pro and that, that was the time I felt like man I want to be a navigator I want to be a sailor and that's the only way we can perpetuate our culture how was the trip over can you tell us about it yeah uh, well it was a great adventure uh, water was good uh, the wind was not giving us the right direction where we, we were expecting and uh, the current was not uh, pushing from the east it was pushing from the op opposite side so it was a, a two-day uh, voyage, came to be a, a five-day voyage. So three days we were off the course and we had to, you know, when the wind changes, we had to go back to our course and come back to Saipan. Yeah, so it was a great adventure. What's the most interesting thing you've experienced under sail? Uh, humbleness and 
and helping, uh, caring for each of our 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 uh, crew and our voyager and our cap our captain is uh, is I think it 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 changed our our uh, it it actually changed our our our. Uh, it just changed your your whole attitude, you know. It's it's very uh, uh, passionate and very uh, uh, I don't know. But during the voyage, it's just like thanks and love, you know. Is is in the is in your mind and in your heart. But voyaging and you're out there like 30, 50 miles and seeing a butterfly flying out there in the open water is crazy. It's incredible, you know. So it's uh, that's how you can tell that we're we're you know we're all belong out there and we're part of it. So uh, that's why I love sailing. You know, it's uh, part of our culture and it's uh, it's fun to do. So yeah. Um, Gifino Tsamoru, Afa Punsanga ni Tau Tau. Uh, Gifino Tsamoru, uh, Unanae Todu i Mangatsongo and Donkulu na Sidhu, Smasi ene man sauna man man Pumolu ka nainia gini na na sauza ni Finatina Smami giza guan za no estige na tafatina si i hina nauta gini nguam esta saipan za this is a uh, Tahatsa Trebe Tolai, the Tolai lo mela za kada sakan tanamas mega izan tanamas bula na sakman giningguam para magi saipan za no senior judun mizu todo tio masusedi esti pus unano yam zutalun don kluna si dus masi. We've been speaking with Ben Guelu Rosario, one of the crew members aboard the Chamorro Sakman that came to Saipan this month, April 2017, the first time in over 200 years that a traditional Chamorro sailing canoe has traveled from Guam to Saipan. When we come back, we'll have more. This September, the Northern Marianas Humanities Council Northern Marianas College, University of Guam, and Guampedia will host the third Marianas History Conference in Saipan. The conference theme, One Archipelago, Many Stories, Milestones in Marianas History, highlights the deep and rich history of the Mariana Islands. It also bridges the political division of the archipelago, which dates to the late 19th century. The conference steering committee is now accepting abstracts under the following general categories. Ancient history, including the results of archaeological research, early colonial history in the 17th and 18th centuries, colonial history in the 19th and early 20th centuries, World War II, recent post-war, and oral history and genealogical research. Paper abstracts may be submitted by April 28. For more information, visit the Northern Marianas Humanities Council website at northernmarianashumanities.org. That's northernmarianashumanities.org. Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. In this half of the show, we listen in on a presentation by some of the crew members and those involved in bringing a Sakman to Saipan from Guam. That's a Chamorro sailing canoe. um, As they make a presentation to local middle school students. First off, we'll hear from some of the students, what they learned from the presentation. And then we'll listen in as crew member John Castro talks to the students about some of the aspects of sailing out on the open ocean using only traditional navigation techniques. It was a windy day there at the Carolinian Ut, and we do uh, apologize for some of the technical quality of this recording, but we feel that the information is going to be interesting for you. So here are the students. Hello, my name is Ian. I'm from Haput Middle School. Today we were learning about uh, famous navigators and how they navigate through the sea. I think the fun interesting was how would they live to navigating in the sea and how they live in the sea like like how the how how it looks like in the sea and many things they saw in the sea. Can you get a bit an example of how they live and what they yeah. saw? Uh, sometimes they would have to poo or pee in the ocean. They also saw some 
animals like whales and sharks. My name is Jan. I am from Hopwood Middle School and today I learned about the different natural resources that navigators back then used for navigating through the seas. Like ocean currents, wind, stars, birds, and other marine life. How do you feel about being a part of today's presentation? I actually feel quite glad that I'm a part of it because not a lot of people know the old ways of going around. What I find interesting about today is that uh, how they travel from Guam to here and what they use to navigate and how they use like the stars or something. That, uh, I found interesting that uh, their how long they how long they voyage and. The crew members, they, they've they been a crew member for so long and they're still not a navigator until now. And they said they've been a crew member like for almost 50 years and still not a navigator. So I think that being a navigator is really hard. My name is Naria and I learned about um, how navigators are not as popular as before and like they're going extinct. And what did you find most interesting about today? Um, how long they voyaged and like how confined the space is. Tell us, how confined is the space? Um, it's really confined. <laughs> it's um, pretty small and they stay there for like a month or so. No one know what Nana is? Mom. There you go. If that's the mom, what would this be? Daughter. Daughter or the son which is called the Padgun. So these two are the ones that are holding the canoe to stay afloat, but without the gear. This is like the umbilical cord where the mom is connected to the child. Without this, the canoes won't float upright. So the gear, the nana, the patkul, palina would be the main mass. That's the one that's straight up there. Lodzak is the sail. Parts of the Lodzak, there are different names. Again, this is Chamorro and Carolinian. The Chamorro has a name for each part. Same does the Carolinian. They have a name in their language for the different parts of the canoe. There's Totlang Lahi and Totlang Palawan. That's the two sticks that or on the cell, that's the cell type too. In Carolinian, it's they say stick shabu and stick made uh, male and female stick. I have Carolinian blood in me, and so does Uncle Benguelo. Uncle Benguelo is a descendant of Aguro. It's actually a Teregezo. Teregezo, Regolopoi family. Uh, and you guys know who Aguro is? Yes. And where is he? Yeah, supposedly he's been late to rest in Nanyagaha, right? You guys can feel free to go walk around, touch the canoe, ask more questions. Uh, one thing though, I just please try not to get up on the canoe. As you can see, we have some repairs to be done and we don't want anybody getting injured. So please feel free, go ahead. There is a ceremony, a special ceremony that once you're coming in from the ocean, you bring with you the spirit of the ocean. So you don't just come in on land and start going anywhere you want. A special ceremony in Carolinian is called Atari. It's when the navigator allows you to go out and about on land. So no, no harm can happen. So it depends how many days. Some will say the actual days would be fourth day, third day, fourth day, and it depends on the navigator. Sometimes just the following day. Yeah, but it has been practiced to be at least three days. You guys know where the front or the back of the canoe is? That's right, either one. It's where the potgun stays. The potgun takes most of the beating, the rough ocean. So if the wave is coming from that side, where would this be? Where would the patgun be? If the waves are pounding from that side, where would this be? On the other side. 
which makes this side being the front if you're heading that way right you see all these sticks here do you guys know what they're for barbecue no, the boat. they're the repair kit they're like the one um Kubenguelu said the patch so any part of the canoe that breaks we put a spline like a human when they break their arm we put sticks like that and tie to keep it straight so these are all the repair kits and uh for looks like we need to go get some more you can see the repair there you see under this bench there's a stick like this because the the platform cracked so they we repaired it by putting one of this under and tying it together we steer with the rudder we steer with the paddle and we also steer with the sail but with the sail you cannot steer upwind question where do we sleep when we come to land well, that's a good question there's a ceremony a lot of this on the canoe it's not about how strong you are how good you can jump from one end to the canoe to the other end it's how you meditate you collect all your spirit and be one you feel the canoe it's i cannot really explain this you just have to go and experience it yourself and where do we stay when we come to land right now our uh, great director mr john taguabel set us up with a nice hotel over here next to the beach but yeah in in in, in uh in every place I myself, when I've gone to voyages on the outer islands of Yap, Satawal, Elato, Lamotrek, like I said, I want all the schools to start learning how to build huts. Every village should have a hut because that's the place where we entertain our guests. We feed them there, we give them food, drinks, make them feel comfortable. So before we actually get into land in the deep parts of the island, we stay on the shorelines uh, right now we have a contemporary hut that uh, director Tagwabel has set up for us we're making use of modern technology and modern material so that's just like a, a sealant almost like a potty so they sell it but in in traditional ways we would use the sap of the breadfruit tree you know the when you hit the breadfruit tree and the white that sticky stuff yeah they mix that with lime and they there's a process and then they, they coke so it, the water doesn't really leak as much the canoe still leaks but it's nothing to worry about it's just the way it's supposed to be you cannot get the canoe 100% dry as you can see it's so open on the top rain can come in different waves can pound in do we clean it yes we do we have to clean it right in order to live happily you have to have clean environment and organizing is very key where to distribute weight and when it's night out there and you say okay i want to eat you know which part of the canoe or the food stored so you don't have to keep walking around where is it where is it so cleaning organizing there you go Any questions? So am I going to see huts being built at Hubwood? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Remember guys, you learn before building the canoe. It starts with building ourselves together, working together. And in order to have a canoe, we need a canoe house. So we need more huts at the schools and all our villages so that one day when we have a super awesome canoe seafaring institution class happening we want to ensure every village has a canoe house and hopefully every canoe house has a canoe being built in it you guys want to learn how to build canoe all right let's start by learning how to make ropes because even before building a house you need to make more ropes than actually finding the wood because that's how you're gonna put everything together it's the ropes you're gonna learn how the traditional way spin it on your thigh spin it on your arm it's fun because you guys get to talk sit down talk and spin away so 
in Carolinian, what do you call this? Sawi. Sawi. In tomorrow it's called? Kuru. In tomorrow what is it called? Kulu. 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 Louder. 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 That's it. Now, you've seen this in the Polynesian movies, right? Yeah. yeah. Archaeological evidence showed that we are at least thousand years older than the Polynesians. So we have been practicing this before the Polynesians. Any more questions? Weapons? Yes. But well, why, right? Why? That's our weapon. The fishing lure is our weapon to catch our food. You always come in peace when you're visit when you're a visitor. Right? So you don't come you don't come thinking of fighting already. It's more like if you were there at the presentation yesterday, it's more like bringing gifts, asking, giving thanks, asking if we can land on your shores, saying we are tired, we are hungry, stuff like that. So you're really more like to say begging. Can I please enter your island? I'm hungry and tired. It's more like that. It's not like I'm coming to rule your place. No, no, no. Okay? Come in peace. Alright? Thank you. Thank you. That's John Castro, one of the crew members of the Chamorro sailing canoe Sakman that sailed from Guam to Saipan this month, the first time in 200 years. The Northern Marianas Humanities Council was uh, pleased to partner with the Chamelinian Cultural Village, Inc., and uh, some of the other organizers in bringing students to the site and doing some public education on the event, including this radio show. And we hope you've enjoyed our presentation today. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Katherine Harris. This program was supported by a We the People grant awarded to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Thank you.